hello hello on this video i'm going to be giving you some long distance dating and relationship advice this is exclusive for christian women so it's have to keep watching it will bless you i can guarantee you of that good morning everyone okay hold on let's get going this is a long awaited long requested um topic and this is actually going to be part one part one i'm going to have to come back later and do part two if not tonight then tomorrow all right if not tonight then tomorrow because i don't have a lot of time this morning good morning monica how are you today hello good morning kyra who else we got nuna lori who came here first susie Janet, is that Petra? Chanel, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Tanya. Good morning, ladies. How are you doing on this Friday? Morning, actually. You never see me live this early in the morning. Um, hello, Teresa. Alicia is in the house as well. Good morning, everyone. Um, okay, so let's dive in because I have about 30 minutes. Um, I actually have an appointment, so I really am going to be done in 30 minutes. Good morning, Janelle. And then, um, like I said, this will be part one. I'll come back again. Um, if not tonight, then so I'll probably do it tonight. I like to spend Saturdays with my kid. That's why you don't usually see me live stream on Saturdays because that time is for him. Um but um I'm about to, I'm about to jump in. Welcome everyone. My name is Sarita Fox Worth. I am an author, I'm a life coach and I'm a Bible teacher. Um I have written twelve books to date for women of God that love God and desire marriage. The majority of my books are about love, dating, and relationships. I also have books that will help you to fast and pray, learn about your prophetic anointing, hear from God in prayer. Um, the two books, I'm actually going to pull from my latest release, which is Smart Dating Rules for Christian Women. I released this book in February of this year. There's a chapter in here. Okay, so Smart Dating Rules for Christian Women includes 26 smart dating rules. They're biblically based, and then they help you whether you are in a relationship or whether you're not. So this is not only for women that are like about to get married, obviously, but this is for women who are... You're making new friendships or you're in the safe right now. So I've been emailing those of you on my email list. I've been emailing you about being in the safe, um, about when God has you all to himself and you're not dating anyone. That's not a bad thing. That does not mean you're being too picky. It does not mean something's wrong with you. It does not mean you're never going to get married. It simply means that because you are so valuable in the eyes of God, you are not on the rack for any random person to enjoy. That's not even going to marry you, but you are being kept in a sacred, very special, blessed place with the Lord because you are so valuable. And because you are so special, you're not available to any and everyone. God says, no, no, no. What you're not going to do is play games with my daughter right now. I'm going to keep you away from her and I want her to myself so that I can mature her, develop her, teach her about herself, teach her about me, um, love on her some more during this single season. And then once I am ready, says the Lord, for her to be found by the man of God that is prepared to be the spiritual covering and the companion it is that she has been waiting for. Once that man is ready and he comes into her life, then I will release her because he will also be willing to pay the price for you because you are so valuable to God. So anyway, that being said, while you're in this safe, um, whether you're in this safe right now, whether you're actively dating, whether you're in a relationship, Smart Dating Rules is going to help you. Okay, um, so go to the link in my bio and you can grab this copy. And then I also want to show you how to prepare for your future husband, waiting, dating, and trusting God for your Adam. When you get these books from me, not Amazon, you can get them on Amazon. But when you order them directly from me from the Love and Miracles Book Boutique, they come with free gifts automatically. It automatically is going to come with this beautiful 
diamond crystal pen. Whoops! Dang. Okay. <laughs> it's also going to come with this beautiful prayer card. All right. This prayer on here is for spiritual sensitivity and to help you to hear from God. Um, my mom has this hanging up on her refrigerator. What do, what do y'all do with y'all prayer cards? I made them like this. So you can like put them in your bag. And then whenever you want to pray and hear from God, you can just whip it out. Say the prayer. It's the daily prayer. It will help you to be more spiritually sensitive. So your gift is going to show up like this. Okay. When you order from me, it's included in the price. All right, so go to the link in my bio, order your copy. These are shipping out today, and then they'll ship out again on Monday. All right, um, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. If you have questions about long-distance dating, do not put it in the comments. Put it in the question bubble, all right, because I'm about to focus, which means I'm not going to be necessarily reading all the comments and then going back and forth because you'll throw off my train of thought. Put it in the question bubble, and then I will give you some tips real quick for long-distance dating. Okay, from Smart Dating Rules. Smart Dating Rules for long distance dating. And I will answer your questions as soon as I go through some of these. So, part two of Smart Dating Rules are dating in the modern world. And these are hot topics. These are dating rules that apply specifically to our generation. Such as long distance dating, online dating cross-denominational dating so some of these things were not an issue 100 or even 50 years ago 50 years ago nobody was saying how do i do long distance uh dating serena 50 years ago you met somebody in your town um 50 years ago there was no online dating 50 years ago you you i think there was cross-denominational dating but there probably just was not a lot of uh conversation about that so now that we, especially with social media, right? Everybody has a voice. Everybody can talk. Everybody can share. Everybody can chime in and everybody can ask questions. After working with women for over 12 years, I put in specifically single women that desire to be married for 12 years, very much in my lane. I have compiled these hot topics into part number two because I wanted to, of course, be a blessing. And I wanted to share with you, biblically speaking, how you can go through the, the season of being single, dating, and being in, in relationships um, and maintain your peace, maintain your joy, maintain your dignity. Not lose any of those things while you're waiting, of course, for the godly husband to come into your life. So let's start at the beginning. All right. Rule number one for long distance dating is to remove the distance as much as possible. What does that mean? That means that at no point should you ever... I'm going to say some things. Okay. Let me just, you know, let me pray real quick before I even start saying some things that, you know what I mean? Because if I don't pray, the spirit of offense, okay, I say something that will bless your life. You'll get so offended and you'll be gone and then you won't be blessed at all. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity to speak into the lives of your precious daughters. <clears throat> And I pray that in this moment you will use me as a vessel, that your spirit will be in the midst of us, O oh Lord, and that you will speak to the hearts of these women and give them a word that they need. Give them the wisdom it is that they need, God. Let operational insight flow freely by way of the Holy Ghost alone. Let it be none of my opinion, none of my flesh, none of my emotion, but let it be 100% from your throne room on today. I yield to you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Me hydrate. <clears throat> okay. Smart dating rule. Oh no! Look at that. Gosh. Ah. Oh, how annoying. You know what? You can't see it right now because all the comments and the people's names are in the way. But when I put the replay up, none of the stuff on the bottom of the screen will be there. And you will clearly be able to see this drippity drip drip. <sighs> I can't do nothing about it. What can I do? I can't do anything about it other than sit here and let you look at the drip mark on my shirt. Gosh. Okay. In the air dry in a few minutes. Um, <laughs> okay. So, oh, Black Rider Space, I'm glad you're in here. Don't forget, if you are writing your very first book, okay, if you are writing your very first book, 
Um, I am working with new Christian authors in the month of July, helping you to write and sub-publish. So when it comes to finishing your manuscript, packaging your manuscript together, putting it into a book, finding an editor, finding a book designer, finding a cover designer, hiring talent, figuring out your packing, figuring out your shipping, figuring out your pricing. I have written and self-published 12 books and y'all, I have already met my 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 sales goal for the month and it is only May 13th. I'm going to say that one more time. I, have, I know this is unrelated to some of y'all, but for some of y'all that are writing your book, I have already met my book sales goal for the month. It is only the 13th of the month. So I know how to self-publish and I know how to make money. I know how to market and sell my books. Go to the link in my bio and join the book writing challenge, which is coming up in July if you need help with that. Okay, moving on. Long distance rules for long distance dating. Number one is to remove the distance as much as possible. Now, back to what I was trying to say right before I started to pray. Um... At no point should you, as a Christian woman, that dry quick. Look, it's already dry. At no point should you, as a Christian woman, say, I'm in a relationship with somebody who you have never physically met. Now, in the world that we live in, they have a whole program called Catfish, which has been out for a couple of years now. And you would think that because that program is out, more people are wiser and smarter when it comes to this, but they are not. And so... At no point should you ever be in a long distance situation and think that you're in a real relationship with somebody that you have never actually met. Now, let's talk about those of you who have met the person. You know you're talking to a real person. Um, you have physically met. that. If you're actually in a relationship with somebody, don't you think that person wants to see you? So, you want to remove the distance as much as possible. Now, being that, let's say you live in Virginia, because I live in Virginia, and the other person lives in California. You got a whole time difference, not to mention the flight. How, how long is the flight? I think the flight is like, is it six hours? I think it's like six or eight hours or something like that. You got this huge flight, you got a time distance, okay. However, very real and consistent effort should be made on both parts. To see each other and to spend physical time together. You cannot truly get to know the heart of a person without watching them and seeing their actions. You can't just listen to somebody's words and say, okay, now that they didn't say all the right things, that's all I need to hear. Let's go, let's go straight to the altar. You said all the right things, man of God. No, 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 no. You need to see how he is living and then vice versa. Okay, so... Um, sometimes people could think, uh, that my messages are one-sided. They're not one-sided. Everything that I say applies vice versa as well. And I did put a lot of that in the book this time to make sure that my point is perfectly clear. So to be fair, you need to see how that person is living their life. And likewise, they need to see how you live yours. Okay. So the only way you can see how somebody lives their life is to go into their environment. So removing the distance as much as possible does not mean that you spend up all your money, right, to, to keep flying to California and then they never come to see you. It also doesn't mean that it's one-sided and you always make him chase you down, but you never put the effort in to go and see him. It should be two-sided because it's a two-way street when you're in a relationship that is that is hopefully going to be on the path towards getting married. So you need to be able to go into that person's environment. You need to be able to go into their space. You need to see how they are living. This is huge, y'all, because people will deceive you. And some of you already know this. People will deceive you over the phone. They'll make it sound like they got it going on, girl. You'll be thinking he living so well. And you will not know until you go see him that he really lives with his parents <laughs> or a friend. Or I remember y'all. I, I, now, this is when I was younger. This is when I was in my, I was 26. And I had a friend. She was a little bit older than me. I want to say she was like 29. Um, but I remember when I was 26, I had a crush on this guy at church. And I used to always talk about how much I had a crush on him. He was so cute. And I was hoping he would approach me. And my friend was like, why are you interested in him? Sarita, he has a roommate. And I was like, I know, but and she was like, but we are not college students. 
She said, we are full grown professional people. He has a roommate. She said, he's not even a real man with a roommate. And I was like, really? He's not a real man. I'm like, he drives a nice car. She was like, no. And you know what? That was the word of wisdom that I needed because I didn't have a roommate. Now, if we were, let's say, on the same page, let's say we both were just getting started in our career or just coming out of college and we both had roommates. Okay. But if I, like, at that point, I had already purchased and sold my own home, my first home. And the this person is still with a roommate. What does he know about handling business on his own if he still has a roommate? Nothing. And grown men don't have roommates. Now, again, if you're looking at me right now, you're 20, 21, 22. Obviously, I'm not talking about or to you. Because you're going to get with somebody that's in your age group. And you guys are doing similar things in your life. Because you probably got a roommate. Then it will be okay. But if you're a professional woman in your career. And you know how to how to get and, and maintain and pay a mortgage. <laughs> surely the man that God wants you to be with. Is going to understand even that process. And he's not going to be like splitting bills with a whole nother human. Okay. Y'all got my point. So, you cannot tell how somebody is living just by talking to them on the phone. You need to go into their space. You need to go into their environment. And then vice versa. Because he could talk to you. And y'all can have these amazing conversations all you want. But he needs to come around you so he can see how you live. If he's supposed to be a provider, and he is. Let's be very clear about that. If he's supposed to be a provider, he needs to come and see how you live so he can decide on his own. If he's ready to step up to the plate. Now, again, you are a successful professional woman. So, it's obviously, he's not going to come in and just take over all the financial burdens. Obviously, that's not the way it works. Okay? I'm talking to, uh, prayerfully, I'm talking to grown-ups here. So, he's not going to come in and say, oh, I got to take over all of her stuff. But he's going to know in his mind, I said this the other day, I'm going to say it again. He's going to know in his mind that as a husband, he is going to shelter the responsibility and the weight of providing for a family. And if you are supposed to be his woman, a real man wants to take care of his woman. And that's just that. So he needs to come and see how you're living, what your quality of life is, so that he can see if, if he even wants to provide for a woman like you. Do you know there was this guy... When I was a teenager, I was only like 17, 18. He used to always say I'm high maintenance. You have maintenance, Sarita. You just so high maintenance. You high maintenance. And I used to be like, what is the problem? Like, why do you say that like it's a negative thing that I'm high maintenance? Isn't that a good thing? Well, in his mind, it was negative because he was broke. And, but see, the flip side of that is it was a good thing because he was locating himself. He knew that if he was going to be my man, he needed to come in and he had to take care. He had to provide. He had to take care of his woman. And he knew in his mind, is this the type of woman I could take care of a high maintenance woman? I don't want to. She is requiring too much and I'm going to be broke. So in his in his mind, right? In his mind, he was like, this is, this is too much for me, which is fine. It's better for him to know that about himself and for us to know that up front. Then for us to get into a relationship and there to be expectations on both sides. And then you have two individuals who are going to argue and fuss and not be able to see eye to eye concerning money. Okay, finances is what the second leading cause of divorce, I believe. Now let's talk about something other than money. Let's talk about family units. Let's talk about relationships in a person's life. You need to be in each other's space so that you can see how you both uh, operate concerning family, friends, neighborhood, community, and most of all, church. Very, very important. You need to see how does this person act when they go to church? Do they actually go as much as they claim that they go? Like, what do they do? How are they participating in the body of Christ? Let's not omit these things, women of God, because I'm talking to Christian women. Let's not omit how the person is planted and rooted in the body of Christ. How? 
The Lord said that he gave ministry gifts to the body of Christ. Therefore, you are a ministry gift and so is your future husband, which means that right now as a single man, he is a ministry gift. Let's see how compatible your ministries actually are. Let's not omit this. Now, let me encourage you real quick because here's what I'm discerning. Soon as you start talking about ministry gifts and calling and anointing and complimenting, you... Everybody in your mind has probably been erased. Like every person that you started looking at me, they've probably been erased. And you start to think things like, I'm never going to meet a man like that, Serena. I have never met one like that. I have never met a man that can match me spiritually. I know that. That's why you are single still, right? Because if you did meet him, you would already be married to him. Um, but a lot of you will think that and you will think that you're asking too much or it's impossible. And I can promise you. It is not impossible. You're not asking too much by expecting a man of God to understand what his calling is, what his purpose is, and to be doing something in the body of Christ because we are needed in these last days more than ever. And to think that the only people who are operating in their calling are women is a slap in the face to God because don't you think God matures his sons? Like God is not one sided. God is not just out here teaching women about the things of God, filling them with his spirit and calling them to higher places. God is doing that same thing with men as well. Every man in the body of Christ is not some spiritual baby out here sleeping with women, cussing and cheating on their back. Every, you know what I mean? That is very, very narrow minded to assume that there are no mature. And if there are mature men of God, they already married. Well, they met their wife. So they had to be single at some point. <laughs> they didn't get married as soon as they turned 18. So they were single at some point and they met their wife. There are men of God out here that are being mature. They're being raised up. They hear the voice of God. They know their calling. They know their purpose. So don't think that you're asking or expecting too much because God did not bring you this far. For you to go and marry a spiritual baby. Not when the Bible says. Right? Not Sarita. The Bible says that she's supposed to be equally yoked. Read Ephesians chapter 5. I didn't write that. The Holy Spirit put that in the Holy Scriptures for a reason. That Christ is the head. Then comes the husband. Then comes the wife. It's in the Bible for a reason. The Bible says that. When you do a full study. Of the scripture you will always see men of God who are instructed to teach their family in the things of God you will always see the Lord telling men in the Bible teach your family to worship me teach your family to serve me when you read about those disobedient men especially when you read books such as judges and you know second Samuel when you read about those disobedient men it's not the what now granted we got Jezebel, okay. But what we read is that generations were impacted as a direct result of the choices that those men made. Those men turned their back on God, and so therefore their whole families were cursed or punished or whatever. Because the men have the responsibility of the spiritual uh, leadership in their home. God set it up that way. Hi, Carol. So when you are dealing with somebody long distance, you still have to be able to, rule number one is to uh, 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 um, remove the distance as much as possible because you need to see how they are operating in the body of Christ. How are they operating in their purpose and their calling? How are they serving? Are they serving? Is he a man filled with pride? Now let's talk about these men of God that's out here and they are doing great things for God, but they are like Nebuchadnezzar, okay? They are filled with pride. They think they're the best thing walking, playing games with women. You got those men out there as well, masquerading as being spiritually mature because they have a level of leadership or maybe they have a title, but they're out here playing games with women because they actually have a lot of demons there, but they have on this Christian mask, and so it's very, very important that you are able to physically get into that person's space, be in their environment, and to examine the kind of life that they live and make sure that it is in alignment with the word. Now, nobody is perfect, obviously. 
You want to you want to get into their environment. You want to see how are they with their parents? How are they with their friends? How are they when I'm around? Okay, and we're hanging out with his friends and with his family. Like, what is the what's the word I'm looking for? Um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? What is the oh gosh, I'm I can't think of the word right now, but how does he like introduce you to his friends, his family? What dynamic? What is the dynamic between you, him, his friends, and his family? Is it peaceful? Is it because you know things happen when you're together in somebody's presence, especially in front of their mama or their sister or whatever woman that they that they really respect. How is his dynamic when y'all are together? Are you on the back burner? Are you unimportant? Are you in, are you irrelevant? Does he give honor to you? Does he honor them? concerning you or does he bad mouth you know what i don't like i do not like when a man has children with another woman and he bad mouths her i never like that even before i became a, a unmarried mama myself i never like when a man bad mouth a woman and or any ex of his either like if i'm with him and he starts saying like she did she that i'm like you had kids with her don't say nothing bad about her okay because if it was that bad you wouldn't have had multiple children. You wouldn't have married her. Now, I understand it didn't work out. That's one thing, right? It's one thing to say, here is what happened and why we're not together anymore. But it's another thing to just be like nasty and rude and mean with somebody who you loved at some point. So, let's be um, respectful of each other, especially because we are supposed to be Christian people. Now, let's talk about the flip side of that. Let's talk about people who are way too close with their baby mama. Like, I feel like I'm the third party in y'all's relationship. Like, y'all are supposed to be co-parenting, but really, it seems like you guys are married. You just live in different houses, and it's not supposed to be that way for sure. So, you need to go around. Once again, you need to see how comfortable is she with him. How comfortable is he with her considering if this is somebody who we are dating and talking and getting to know each other for marriage, is y'all relationship appropriate or is it like too far? Is it too, are you guys way so close that it makes me feel uncomfortable? Like, am I over there visiting you and then she just popping up and why does she have a key? Wait a minute, hold on. Because if you're going to be with me, and if we're going to be serious, then nobody should have a key to this place other than me. Nobody should just be popping up. And y'all conversations need to be as platonic as possible, specifically about the children. There's a fine line between, you know how some people will say, I'm, I'm concerned about what my baby mama is doing, blah, 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 because she's the mother of my kids and, and this, that, and the third but really, they just want to control her. Or really, they still got feelings for her. Or really, they're hoping that she changes her ways and they're able to get back together. There's people like that. They'll not be with the person. and But secretly, in the back of their mind, they're hoping that, you know what I mean? Or maybe they're on and off again. Maybe they've been on and off again so long that even though he's with you, talking to you, and he's trying to move on in his heart, He's not actually going to move on because they might be on again. And he probably knows that about them. But because you guys are long distance, he's been getting away with it. Because you're not physically there. You're not physically there to see how much she actually is there. You're not physically there to see their dynamic together and how they are together. You're not physically there to witness their co-parenting setup. So, I got to get ready to go, y'all. That is, that's rude. I have three of these. I have three long distance smart dating rules for Christian women. And because I am out of time, um, I'm going to go and I'm going to come back later. And I'm going to share with you the last two. Was that helpful? Do you have any quick questions for me before I go about long distance dating? You'll probably ask me a question about one that I have not gotten to yet. So smart dating rules for Christian women is. 
the chapter that I pulled from, even though I didn't read it, um, rules for long distance dating is in here. That was rule number one. Remove the distance as much as possible. But I talk in this book and I share um, insight. Um, it's highly important that you both make a genuine effort to meet as often as your relationship requires to remain healthy. So the frequency of you coming together in person, right? The frequency of how often do I need to see them? How often do you need to come see me? That's going to be between y'all, but it's often as that needs to take place in order to remain healthy. Okay. Um... Even though you're separated by long distance, you should both put effort into shortening the distance to visits. Um, and then also creative use of technology as much as it takes to keep the other person reasonably happy. So I remember I was talking to somebody one time that was long distance and he wanted me to use some app that I never heard of. And quite honestly, I didn't even like the app. But it was what he wanted me to use and he asked me to use it to send him videos and that's what I did. It was an app that recorded you talking to them and you just sent it like a video message and um, i was like we literally can open our phones record a video and then text the video but okay you want to use the app or we can just do like we can use the app where it's like live phone conversations or something but he was older too <laughs> he was a lot older not a lot he was like nine years older than me i think so I was like, if this is what you want to use, bruh, no problem. I will download this app. I will record you one minute good morning videos and record you a video, ask you a question if, if that's what you want to do. So my whole point is this, whatever is going to keep your relationship healthy, keep each other happy is what needs to take place. One person doesn't need to pressure the other one so much that they feel unhappy or uncomfortable. But at the same time, you're both mature adults. You're dating for marriage, like you're dating to get married. You're not just dating and out here talking to people because you're bored, prayerfully. Prayerfully, you're not just out here talking to random people because you're bored. You're not stringing anybody along, woman of God. You're not wasting anybody's time. You are out here in these dating streets making moves with intention. All right, rule number two is where it's going to get good as well. I'm going to come back with rule number two, talking about positive progression. And then rule number three is going to be about bridging the gap. Okay, bridging the gap is is, is a little bit different than um, uh, geographical location. Okay, but we're going to get to that when I come back later on. All right, ladies, I hope that was helpful. Um, go to the link in my bio and grab your copy if you don't have it already. Again, it comes with these beautiful gifts. Uh, where's the pen? This pen? <laughs> comes with a diamond pen, crystal diamond pen. I'm excited to get this to you. All right, these are shipping out today and then they're going to ship out again on Monday question is do you have rules for dating men with children specifically if you don't have any yes i do that's in this book there's a chapter in here about making sure that your parenting styles are compatible and when i talk about that i'm talking about your parenting styles if you have children now and your parenting style if you don't have children right now when i talk in that chapter i talk about how he is with his children and then the conversations that you will have about your future children together. This book is very intense. You see how long it is? It's over 200 and something pages. Um, it's very intense. It's very deep. And of course, it's completely biblical. 1,000% biblical. So, rule number five is ensure your parenting styles are a match. And it's very important. That's why I put it in here. Because I understand the world that we live in. Um, nobody has had a perfect walk. God knows I have not. Um, I wish I could say, you know what I mean, that I waited for my husband and we and he waited for me and then we had we didn't have children until we got married. I wish that could be my testimony, but it's not. My testimony is going to be that of a person who made some mistakes. Okay, is it up right out of wedlock? All right, and here we are. So, rule number five: 
Ensure your parenting styles are a match. <clears throat> and I have bullet points in here that will help you. I'm about to go, y'all, for real. I got like one minute. Personal experiences. This chapter is long as well. More bullets. These are things to consider, again, on both sides. So, this is not just one-sided. All right? But it, it will absolutely help you. Um, okay. So, go get that at the link in my bio. I will see y'all later. I don't know what time. But, I'm going to come back later and continue on with this conversation. You're welcome, Miss Singleton. And thank you guys for being here.